Uh, last month, we were doing characters that radiated God's glory. Now, this month, uh, we will be looking at um, the book of Philippians. This is not what I'm starting today. But for the three coming Sundays, get ready. We, have, uh, uh, we want to look at the Philippian church. And uh, the theme will be a portrait for a glorious church. God wants to, us to be a glorious church that radiates his glory. So the book of Philippians, we will be going through that for three Sundays. So get ready. And uh, we are trusting God that the Lord will speak to us as he transforms us as Sitam Kyaburut to be a glorious church. And a glorious church radiates his glory. Amen. And so allow me to go to take you to the word of God, the book of Psalms uh, 46. That's where we will be reading the book of Psalms 46. So today I share something different. And then from Sunday, we will begin there and uh, look at the book of Philippians. Let me read the NIV. Maybe it can even be splashed on the... On the screen. Verse 1. Reading the NIV, God is our refuge and strength, a never present help in trouble. Can we read that together, the first verse? Eh? Is Isn't that sweet? God is our refuge and strength ever present, always there. Hallelujah. Help in time of trouble. Who doesn't need help in time of trouble? We need it, isn't it? And there could be trouble that is happening right now, but God is our present help in trouble. Verse 2. Therefore, we will not fear though the earth give way and the mountains fall in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surges. It's like the, the psalmist is now bringing the commotion, the troubles. Eh? And uh, he says, though the earth give way and the mountains fall in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. Verse 4, there is a liver whose streams make grant the city of God, the holy place where the most holy, the most high dwells. God is within her. She will not fall God will help her at the break of day. Verse 6. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. Verse 7. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see the works of the Lord. The desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shield with fire. Uh, verse, verse 10. Verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted among in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Now, allow me to say, we are set to radiate his glory. Arise, shine, for his light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. We are trusting God, and this is what we are doing, radiating his glory. And uh, we mentioned, even as we were going through the, uh, in January especially, that when we are talking about this light and radiating his glory, that this is a battle. 
And these are spiritual things we are talking about. But the physical light is symbolic of the spiritual light. And we say that the darkness, the physical darkness, is also symbolic of the spiritual darkness. And the scripture says that uh, darkness covers the world and the darkness the people. So as we are in a world that is covered by darkness and the darkness that is covering the people, we are rising and shining by the light that comes from the glory of God. Amen. And we say that this light is different. While it is noontime, somebody could be grappling in darkness because it's about spiritual darkness. While it is night, somebody could be walking in the light and shining even at midnight because we are talking about spiritual light. Hallelujah. And radiating his glory. And as we do this, now we are in a world, we are in a world that is noisy. Uh, this scripture we have led, and I trust that God will help me not to, uh, to be a bit brief as we feel does, so that we can um, finish the service. Because I want to share something very brief from this uh, chapter of Psalms. I just picked the first verse. It says, the Lord is our refuge. Can I read it? Can you read it again? God is in times of trouble. Where is this trouble? It is here. Where you are supposed to arise and shine and radiate his glory. We are in a world of trouble. Am I talking? Do you have trouble right now? <laughs> I don't want to tell you to raise your hand, but I know there is trouble. You may not have caused it, some we cause, but uh, we don't have to cause trouble for trouble to be there. See the trouble in Ukraine? That's trouble. We are crying for that nation. They are in trouble. We talk about war. Talk about destruction. Have you watched the, 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 the television? Have you watched the, the images? The houses, the buildings, the desolation that are caused, that is trouble. And we are praying for them. And we are trusting God. We want peace, isn't it? But the scripture says that God is our refuge in trouble, ever present. Please make a note that. And uh, between that, between that statement and the last statement, the second last, especially verse 10. Verse 10 is saying, be still and know I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Between those two verses, now between those two verses is trouble. The, the, the psalmist is writing a bit, or he talks about God and what he does, but he, at the beginning he says, who the Lord is, a refuge. A never present help in time of trouble. Then there are, there are scriptures that are telling about the trouble between there. But the last verse they say, be still. And I want to say, as we radiate his glory, you know, in a troubled world, we need to be still. And know that he is God. Amen. But now how do we become still in a troubled world? In the midst of trouble, how do we become still? Now, I want to share something on the power of meditation. Power of meditation. The power of meditation. And I want to say between the trouble there and being still, because God says, be still and know he is God. How have you been still in trouble? Now, I want to bring something very quickly about meditation. And let me say this, just follow me. Biblical meditation, that is what I mean. Biblical meditation, this definition, the Bible definition, biblical definition of meditation, biblical meditation, is generally speaking quietly, 
or muttering. You know, this muttering is a speaking, a speaking, speaking uh, repeatedly. That is the root of that word, meditation. Speaking quietly. Did you hear me? Muttering words. And uh, the root of that, if you read Psalm 1, what does the Bible say? Blessed is the man who walks in the council, who does not walk in the council of the wicked. You may not open that, I'll just read. Or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers. Verse 2 says this. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. Day and night. Actually, the Bible says, whatever he does, prosper. It goes on to say that. But this word, meditate, is uh, simply means speaking quietly, pondering, speaking to yourself. And uh, this is uh, what I want us to connect verse 1 with verse 10 of Psalms 46. Now let me say this. The actual idea of meditation is literally to ponder. Pondering. To dwell on. You know when it means to dwell, you stay, isn't it? You stay. And uh, this is then muttering of speaking scripture to ourselves so that it starts taking root in our hearts. Did you hear me? I said this, it is simply pondering, dwelling in the word, speaking, muttering the scriptures to ourselves. I'm not saying preaching. Hallelujah. I am saying speaking to yourself with the purpose of what? Or what is the objective? So that this scripture can take root in your, in your heart. Hallelujah. For you to remain, for you to dwell, you can't do it just in this one service because I am preaching, I am speaking a word, then you go. We are talking about meditation is literally staying there. It is dwelling there. The power of meditation. That is what we will connect verse 1 and you are able to be still in the midst of what? Trouble. And when you are still, you can radiate God's glory. If you join in the trouble and you are shaken with the trouble, the world cannot tell. And you know what? How can you radiate his glory? It is when it, we are in trouble. And like Jesus, who was in the sea, and there was trouble in the sea, what happens? When he arose, he told the storms, be still. But before he did that, he was asleep. And the disciples were troubled. He was asleep. That is the difference. That in trouble and no wonder they called him. Hallelujah. They say, don't you care? We perish. We want to be like that. People can run to us in trouble. And they say, don't you care? Can you help us? Hallelujah. When we are radiating his glory, we are radiating this glory in a dark world. We are becoming a help to the world that is full of darkness, that is helpless. And so I am saying Christian meditation is the act of filling one's mind with scripture. Filling your mind. Can you say mind? I am saying you are thinking system. You know sometimes spiritual things are taken to be spiritual and we don't involve our intellect. We don't involve our thinking. It is simply filling one's mind. Can I say this? Trouble happens in the mind. You know, have you had trouble? And your mind is moving like a clock. By the way, there are some news you hear, isn't it? Do I have a witness? You hear them. They put you off balance. What they affect mostly? You are thinking. You are set on a roller coaster. And you are saying, you go to sleep, you can't sleep. Ah, me, I have experienced those things. There are things that have put me up not because I wanted to be up. I was thinking about them. They were in my mind. And they were taking me around. I need an answer. I am troubled. Have you had that experience? Uh, even if you look so sanctified, I know you have it. 
We are in a world of trouble. Are you in another one? You are in the earth. There's a world of trouble. And I'm saying for us, now meditation, it is the act of filling your mind with what? With scripture. And this is the way to dwell on God. Glory to God. That is we dwell in God. That means focusing on God through scripture. So that we can constantly dwell and practice what God has said. You dwell in the scripture. You dwell in the word. So that you can constantly dwell in what and practice what God has said. Let me teach you today. This produces not only knowledge of the Bible, but also a heart transformation. This is where we are transformed. Hallelujah. The purpose of scripture is to transform us. As you take it to heart, you can stand and dwell on it, and it will transform you. You know, you can read the Bible, but there is something else we need to do. As we read the Bible, we need to meditate on the word. When we say meditating, I said it is dwelling there. And it is filling your mind with this word. It is the word of God that calms your mind. You know, David, wrote most of the Psalms, isn't it? And this is the man who writes so much about being still my soul. And because of my time, because I have to start concluding this message, I want to say this. We, the Bible is calling us to slow down and understand Scripture. As a believer, we should speak quietly to ourselves the word of God as our form of meditation. Now I said about David, he is the one who wrote Psalm 1 and David was passionate on meditation. You know David was a victor. He had many victories. Now David went through so much trouble he is the man who missed the spear like this. You are on a wall, but somebody wants to pin you on that wall. Talk about trouble. You are anointed king, and you are running away, and they are hunting you like a deer. You hide in caves. You go in those places. But you know, David stands out. The reason why David stands out, he is the writer of that first time. He knew the art he knew the secret of meditating upon God's word. Hallelujah. He is thrown away from the tabernacle. But he is in the jungle. This man would meditate upon the word of God. No wonder he was this victor, uh, victorious. So David is somebody we need to emulate. And I want to say very quickly, the scripture says, Oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. That is Psalms 119 and 97. The psalmist is saying, I meditate on it all day long. Now, what is, what is the difference between Christian meditation and other meditation? Lest I lose you, I want you to know there is a difference. Now, listen to this. There are very many other religious groups that do meditations. Not even religious and other groups. And uh, what happens, the difference is for us as believers and Christians, our meditation is not to empty our minds. Those other meditations, most of them empty their minds or they focus on something. You see what? For us, 
our meditation, like the meditation, let, let me say something like, uh, because I have led some, like uh, yoga, something like yoga. You know what they do? And that's why it become popular. You are in trouble and you want peace. So you are told peace is within you. What you do, you close your eyes and you focus on those trouble disappearing. And what you are doing is we are supposed to have an active mind and intellect. So what they do and what is the objective it is to kind of make your mind passive. You are not thinking. You are encouraged not to think and to make your mind passive. You are thinking system passive. Now, in Christian meditation and biblical meditation, what we are supposed to do is to involve our intellect actively and make sure it is filled with the word. Do I tell you this? A man who does not think is actually in trouble. You know that. What do you tell people when they are doing wrong things? You tell them what? Do you tell them stop thinking? What do you tell them? Think, what does that mean? You may not have thought so much about it, but what does that mean? You are telling them, use your mind and brain. God gave us a brain. God gave us an intellect. And that's why he wants this intellect to be used positively and actively. When God gave Adam the intellect, when he was giving the names to the animals, by the way, he was using his intellect. But you know what? After the fall, our intellect is corrupted. So thinking is not worldly. Thinking is godly. And God wants us to think. Those other meditations, what they do, they bring your thinking to a passive place. And many times, because I've read other books, you know what? The enemy, when you are not thinking, you get to a realm, you break your mind, even spirits can possess, can come into somebody's life. God has not called us to a passive, to make our mind passive. Can I say this? Even when we make another call and you come here, please don't come here and blank your mind. Engage your mind, amen. Is that worldly? Thinking, Pastor, are you worldly? I am not. I am scriptural. God wants to involve your spirit, your soul, and your body. And when you come, and that's why you stay a lot, even your mind. There are people who have been laid hands, and there are prayers that are made, they don't even listen to them. And prayers can be made any kind of prayer. But I'm saying get, in, get engaged. What I'm saying with the Christian meditation, it is not blanking our minds. It is allowing God to renew our, our thinking system. So when we examine the scripture, we find that we are not called to empty our minds or practice breathing techniques. Breathing Relax your muscles. Relax your mind. That is not Christian. We are saying Christian meditation is look at the scripture. Feel it in your mind. If you ever gone for sessions, and they happen sometimes in the corporate world, you can find yourself in those places. You are told this is a way to have peace. There is somebody who came to my office when I was in another assembly and said, Pastor, we were in a company meeting and we went there and I am sure the meditations we did and the books were given, in fact, I came with the books and we had to pray from the office and cancel those things. He said, I got involved in some kind of meditation that are not right. The things we were doing and I looked at the books and we agreed, hallelujah. And I'm saying this, that is not what is Christian meditation. Christian meditation is focusing on the word and having your mind actively involved and listening. Amen. Christianity is not it's not a religion where we don't reason. 
And that's why there are all kinds of manner of, uh, of things that are called Holy Spirit, but they are not. And because of that, people have feared even being filled of the Holy Spirit. Because sometimes it looks like some drama, very funny dramas. And those people, they don't focus on the word, they don't meditate on the word, and therefore they empty their minds and there can be all kinds of things. Am I talking to somebody? Now, the difference between Christian meditation and other religion meditation is that we fill our minds with the what? The word. Let me say three things very fast that are important when we're talking about meditation. Remember, the scripture says, the Lord is our refuge, our ever-present help in time of trouble. And then at the end say, be still and know he is God. Now what we are talking about here, meditation, is what will help you be still. Number one aspect, practice silence. Practice silence, very fast. Let me say, many of us don't know how to bring our souls to stillness in the presence of God. You know what? When we are quiet, we wonder. Let me say, we are Pentecostal. And uh, we are not noisemakers. But you can hear noise from here. But I want to say, even as we do this, David is somebody who would tell the people, shout to the Lord, Amen. But he is also the one who would say, be still, my soul. I'm saying several times we read in the Bible, be still, my soul. One of the greatest worshippers, like he said, is David. And he would tell his soul to be still. What I'm saying is, for proper meditation, we must learn the art of being silent. Silent. Like I said, between chapter, verse 1 and verse 10, the scripture says, we will not fear, though the mountain be removed, and the waters rise, and the waters soar, the ocean, and the commotion of the world. But what we are saying is that in the midst of that, we must learn to be silent. Now, there is a lot of noise in the world. I don't have to emphasize. Everywhere you turn is commotion and noises. And in that, God is telling us, we need to meditate. In meditation, we must practice what? Silence. Even in commotion, learn to step back and say, Lord, I want to be silent. Sometimes you join the noise and the commotion, and we don't get any help. Now the Bible says, be still and know I am God, this is it. You must voluntarily learn to bring your soul to be still. Even in the houses and where we are. You know how many messes are there? We don't bring our souls and our hearts to that point of being silent. Can I be more practical in this? Let's talk about it. I mean, if the worship team is leading worship, and uh, when you learn this art, even in the midst of a service, there could be singing that is happening. But you are led to be silent. And as you silence yourself, you listen to the song. You know, sometimes it's being sung. You are not actually, you sing it, you sing it. And then you, 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 the Holy Spirit leads you to a place of silence. And especially when we have the must. Nobody would know. <laughs> because sometimes when I stand here, it happens. We are singing a deep song. And I feel like just to be silent. And in that place of silence, I am meditating on that song. And those words start taking root in your heart. This is the way you could be in a commotion and you are silenced by that voice. You know what? These words of the song are taking root in your heart. Hallelujah. And you know, this can only be possible if you have learned to be still yourself. What is this? Being silent. It simply means you sit somewhere. And there's so much, like, like I'm saying, 
for us to be uh, practical. As you rest in a service, and you know that's why sometimes we miss it out even in a worship service. You come for a worship service, maybe what you're just watching is how the ministry is being done here. You know all that. We are not called for that. You know, God has called us to dwell and focus on him. When the songs are happening, discipline your mind. Discipline your soul. To focus on God. And that is what happened this week as I was thinking about this. There's something that happened to us in my family. And there's a report that came and uh, put me down. And I was in the midst of thinking about this and being silent. And I was a bit, I was feeling like we must take a step and go that direction. But I felt in my spirit, we need to be still. Because we have walked this way with my wife and we, have, we thought things were going on well. But there's something that happened that came and the report was not very good. Not our internal fightings, but something from outside we are doing. And it seemed not to work. And I felt in my heart, the Lord was preparing me. In the very midst of that, I said, I will not take this kind of step running around. But I want to be still and know that he is God. Amen. And that is the stillness that God is calling us to. So when you read the word and you are silent, it means you read the word of God. And you can close your eyes. We are saying, you are not blanking your mind. You are closing your eyes or you are looking at it and you are saying, God, what are you saying? God, I want to know. God, I want you to teach me. Hallelujah. So I'm saying you take the word of God. You take the scripture. You don't just read them. That's why people will read the scripture and they will come out like something you have never read. They seem like they are operating in another realm. They take time and ponder. Hallelujah. So I'm saying, be silent, be still. Run that. Number two. I say number one, run to be silent as you ponder. The second one is just what I've said. Engage the power of your thoughts. God has called us to engage that. What does the Bible say in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20? It says, Now to him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what? What we? What we? What we think or imagine. I tell you what. Thinking and imagining Originally, it is not of the enemy. Sitting and imagine. Do you know? Ah, let me use the, the extracts. They draw things, isn't it? What do they do? They imagine a skyscraper. And they do it. Is that evil? That is good. We can employ that in the scripture. The Bible says he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above what we think. What we do what? So think. We must do what? Think. And do what else? Imagine. Hallelujah. Do you know people who come with many ideas and great things, they do what? They think and imagine. I am calling us as we sit. You know what? God the creator, he imagined. I'm sure divinely imagined the world and said, let it be. Amen. And it was, and it was beautiful. God gave us the capacity to think and to imagine. But because of the corruption, that is why you are told, don't imagine, you know what? The devil did not create this. He corrupted. But we are called to think and imagine. And therefore, I'm calling you, as you think about the scripture, the other day we were discussing something uh, with... Uh, With the staff, we were doing study. And I thought about uh, this man called Akan in the book of Joshua chapter 7. You know Akan? After Jericho was defeated, he took something that was not supposed to be taken. He took a garment, hid it somewhere. And because of that sin, 
the, 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 the children of Israel were defeated. But later they defeated Jericho as God helped them. No, they moved, they defeated Jericho. And because Achan took a garment from Jericho, when they went to Ai, they were defeated. But later, God helped them. But later after that, when they defeated Ai, there's a man called the Gibeonites. They came and tricked Joshua. They said, we come from very far. But they were neighbors. And they were not supposed to do any treaty with the neighbors. They were supposed to kill them. But what is interesting, as we were doing this, I was thinking about imagination. And that's why sometimes the scripture becomes sweet. I started thinking, can you imagine the, the Gibeonites? They came, they were men. Hallelujah. And they had uh, crafted an idea to deal with Joshua. Joshua was a man who was meditating upon the word. But this one time, he let loose some guard and the Gibeonites cheated. So they came with the bread that had mold and with bottles of wine that were very old. And so they came and told Joshua, we heard we have been coming from very far. And we heard that you are clearing everybody. Before you get to our place that very far, we want to make a treaty with you that when you come, you will not destroy us. Joshua said, you, if you are from near, we can't. But he said, look at our bread. Look at our bottles. And I was imagining, I started imagining. And uh, the story became very interesting. Even as I thought about myself, you know. Think about it, you know. This is what I'm saying. Think and imagine. And the word of God becomes sweet. And you start getting into the context. I thought about those men. And they are actually elders. And they meet the elders of Israel. And the guys are looking at the bottles. Can you imagine them? You know, and Joshua is saying, yeah, can you check? And you pass it to the next one. Just confirm. <laughs> they look old, yeah? These bottles, these men must have walked for many miles. And then they looked at the bread, you know? Check it. And you know, you get to that context. And then when you, I enter there and I said, for sure, with that kind of a thing, you can be convinced and cheated. And when you think about it, but you know, you read it, the Gibeonites came, they presented the bottles and the bread, isn't it? And then you are past it. That's how we read the scriptures. We never stop to think and... Do you know? Think and do what? Have you ever imagined? The other day, I also imagined something. By the way, when... Uh, the pastor who came here on Sunday and preached. When the wife stood here and there was that uh, kind of shoe for ladies standing. You know what I thought? Let me, let me bring this humor. You know what I thought? If Peter, when he was walking on the water, was wearing those ones, he still would have walked on water. <laughs> I was just sitting here and I was meditating. You don't imagine and you get uh, the word of God is very humorous. And you enjoy it. Hallelujah. Do you have that kind of shoe? If you walk on water, on the word of God, you still walk. It will not sink. Hallelujah. I'm simply saying, imagine and think, study, border. Hallelujah. And then what? You start, <laughs> that was very interesting for me. I said, even Peter had that kind of shoe. He would still have made it. He would not have sunk because of the shoe. He would have sunk because of the faith. Amen. Hallelujah. So it doesn't matter. I mean, this is pondering. This is imagining. Isn't that okay? I was sitting here. I was getting another message. And I was enjoying. But I'm saying, we are called to engage our thinking and imagination. As we talk about business, sit down and say, Lord, your word is so rich. I want to think and involve my mind. God, give me ideas. Hallelujah. And I'm saying, involve this. The Bible says, he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, more than we think or imagine. Be still and know that I am God. 
This is the way to be still. And you know, when you start seeing those things, let me bring you another one. When you think about heaven and the 24 elders, are we together? And, and you are seeing that. You know, sometimes you just read it. The 24 elders. And we are singing. Binguni kuna wazee shirine waende. Wana umuabudu bwana. We are singing it. I tell you, you can focus. As you focus on that, in the stillness of focusing on him, and you begin seeing, there's no problem. You can see those men. They are laying down their crowns, and they are rising again. And as the Holy Spirit gets you there, you know what? It is not just the singing of the music team. You just start joining in another lamb. And you send the Holy Spirit is taking you there and helping you to join the ministry and the service that is happening in heaven. Amen. Amen. And you know, this is the, the beauty of it. That's how people are able to come with songs that are out of meditation. As they meditate on these things, that's why they sing songs that are born of deep meditation. And those songs, they bless many people. And they can span through centuries. Don't we have saints that are still ministering to us? They are 100 years. They are 200 years old. You know what happened? They were gotten out of deep meditation. And this was released as spirit and life. No wonder they are still blessing us. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be Jesus. You know, they are seeing us. We need to meditate. And we need to think and imagine and get there. But please note, it is active thinking. Amen. It is active involvement of God's word. That's true. As you do all that, the scripture says, then speak the word. It is when you are silent pondering and thinking and then you speak the word. That word you speak becomes spirit and life. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 6 and 63, Jesus said, the words that I speak are both spirit and they are life. And you know that is when we get to Job chapter 22. Job was told, when you do these things, then you will decree a thing and it will happen. You don't just stand and start declaring things. You cannot. It is not like that. It's deep meditation. And these words take root in us. And then we speak them. They become live and spirit. Hallelujah. And this is what we are called. The Bible says there is trouble. But for us to be still in a world of trouble, it is we must dwell in the word. We must meditate. We must ponder. We must dwell in it. Jesus said, if you abide in me, and my words abide, as I close, because now I close, I was meditating on that word. I have never seen it that way. Jesus said, if you abide in me, Listen to me as we close. If you remain in me and also remain in my word. Why did he separate the two? Have you ever asked yourself? I found myself there standing and asking, why? If you abide in me and also abide in my words. And I got it. I said, yeah. That's why the church and believers that we have not learned the art of meditating and pondering and continuing in the word. It is one thing to be in the Lord because when you say yes to Jesus, you are born again. A man is in Christ. The old is gone, the new has come. That means he is forgiven. Praise the Lord. Everybody who is born again, say amen. amen. Any man in Christ Jesus is a new creature. But no, you can't stop there. You must abide in what? In the word. I want you to make a resolve. If you abide in me and abide in my word. Now verse 7, that is verse 7 of John 15. It says, whatever you desire, 
whatever you ask. Now, church, I challenge us. Radiating God's glory. Hallelujah. If you abide in the Lord and abide in His, Jesus was saying, remain in my word. Ponder, dwell in that word. Now that you are in me, don't dwell in the word and reject Jesus. And you know, I read the Bible. It's okay, please read the Bible. The Bible is for all. But if you miss out on getting in Christ and receiving him in your heart, you can't abide in Christ. The Bible says, abide in me and abide in my... That means come in Christ and also continue in his word. I challenge somebody who is not born again. This is what Jesus meant. He said, abide in me. I come first. And then what? Abide in my word. Hallelujah. Then it shall be. I will be still and know he is God. I mean now I your ways. Uh, Please bow your hand, bow your hands and sing it. Bow your hands. Amen, amen, amen. I want I want I want you to have this experience today. Sing it Hatre as the music team sings it loudly. Be silent, you can sing Hatre. You must not look at that screen. Close your eyes. We are meditating on those words. We want to be still and know he is God. In a world of trouble, we can be still. So close your eyes. Let's meditate on those words that they are sung. If you know it, Hatre, you can sing it. But I beg you as we clown it, music team. As you meditate on those words. Hide me now. Hide me now.
in silence it's good to learn to be silent and still your soul and still your mind not always running around not always joining the commotion the Bible says the Lord is our refuge and our very present help in time of trouble though the world give way and the oceans roar I will not fear. He is the one who makes the wars to cease. He is the one who works. But the Bible says for us, for me and you, he says, be still and know that I am God. In the midst of trouble, in the midst of the noise, we can be still. And the way to be still is to focus on his word. Abide in me and abide in my words. And whatever you desire, whatever you ask, then it shall be done. We need to learn that art of being silent, the art of staying there and thinking and allowing the Holy Spirit to give us imagination that are real and are god ray and you enjoy the word of God. You can be in solitude alone and enjoy God and become intimate with him. And as you do that, the word of God will now start coming out of your spirit and you will speak and you will declare clear it shall be spirit it shall be life it shall impact because you have waited you have learned it there is a place of shouting there is a place of loud prayer and crying but there is a place of pondering and waiting on him and being still I know that we could be having turmoil and things that are giving us trouble. The soul, my soul, you are troubled. If there is such, allow the Lord right now to minister to you. Oh Lord, when the ocean rise and the thudders low, we'll soar with you about the storms. Glad, Father, right now, by your Spirit, help us to know and to bring our souls to stillness where we can rest in your presence and trust you to work for us, Lord. Oh God, will not run here and there and join the noise and the commotion of the world and be disappointed, but help us by your Spirit to learn to be still and know that you are God. You're now born again. Jesus said, abide in me. If any man be in Christ, is a new creature. Jesus is still forgiving. He's waiting for you. Are you there? You are not born again and you're saying, Pastor, I want to give my life to Jesus. Just lift up that hand. I will see it. We'll commit you to the Lord. Just lift that hand. Are you there? Lift that hand. I will see it. You're saying, Pastor, I'm not born again. I need Jesus to come into my heart. Lift up your hand. Lift that hand, I will see it from here. Just put it up if you are doing it. Can I see any hand? There's somebody saying yes to Jesus. I want you to to come right here as we conclude if you have a candidate please just come if you stand on proxy if there's a candidate in the house just walk to this 
uh, altar. I want to pray as we close this meeting. Hallelujah. And I want to ask the congregation to stand. We want to pray for the candidates. Please just walk here, every candidate. If you are standing for your daughter, your son, even some of them may not be your son, your daughter, just come, just come. We want to pray together. We want to believe God. Those who are in form four, oh, very many, very many. Just come, just come. Just come and stand here. Let's spread out. Uh, I see Joyce stepping out from the music team. It's okay. I want to do it. Oh, we are many. Let them come. We want to make a prayer of faith. Hallelujah. And as you get here, you are saying, Lord, I thank you for that. Mention that name. Mention those names. In the name of Jesus. You are standing proxy. You are saying, Lord, they have a future. Beyond the exam, the Lord, for those who are doing Form 4, they will move into the higher institution. For those who are in Form in, in Study 8, they will move on to good schools. Open up your mouth and say, Lord, I stand here because I believe you are able. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Declare it right now. In the name of Jesus. Mention their name and say, Lord, you have a future for them. You have a destiny. In the name of Jesus. Come on, congregation. You can lift up your hands and agree with them. In the name of Jesus. We are saying no to panic. We are saying no to the, any, 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 any health issues. We are saying no to any blanking of the mind. We are saying no to any interference of the enemy. We are declaring our sons and our daughters will do well in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Right now. Right now. Right now. We bring them to the Lord. Mention the name right now. Oh, get hold of that miracle for that boy. For that young man. For that young man. For that young lady. We are holding them. We are holding it. We are holding on the promise. The word of God. The word of God. Confess it. They shall not be the tail. They will not fail. They will not sink. They will not panic. They will not be destroyed. They will sail through in the name of Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. Let's pray together. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, look at this altar. It's full of men and women. They have come here because they are putting their trust in you. They stand here because of a name. They stand here because of a son, a daughter, a nephew, whoever they are here. Lord, I thank you because you know the names of those ones that are represented and those that are here. We are agreeing together that, Lord, as they face the exam, we rebuke the spirit of panic, we rebuke the spirit of blanking and forgetting what they ought to remember. We stand together and deny the enemy an opportunity to interfere with them. We declare boldness upon them. We declare excellence. We declare blessings upon their intellect. We declare they will do the answers. We declare they will be bold. We declare they will sail through. We declare for the glory of God and for the joy of these families. You will give them the victory. We are seeing exams. They are stepping stone to the future. And we declare these sons and daughters. They are getting to their destinies. We refuse tears that come after results. And we are saying there would not be sorrow and lamentation and cryings in these families. They are standing here because they trust you. And we are praying things will be different for those who are crying and saying my daughter seems to be doing poorly. Lord, we pray for a miracle. We are praying for a change. We are praying for a shift. We are praying for miracles right now didn't you say we ask of you and you will do it in the name of Jesus we declare it shall be well we declare there will be celebration and victories that will come 
We declare those who are in form four, they will plug into colleges. They will plug into their future. Those who are in standard eight, they will plug in good schools in the name of Jesus. The disappointment that come after exams, we say no to them. We say no to them. Lord, I minister to the parents especially. Some of them could be so concerned. I pray you help them to be still and know that you are God. Quieten their spirit and their soul that they will rest trusting that Lord you are in the storm and you will make them victorious. Thank you for the labors that have been done for four years, for eight years. Lord, we wait for a reward. We wait for victory. We declare it at this altar. And we say the victory shall be brought here. There shall be testimonies. Testimonies in Jesus' name. We now embrace the testimonies. We embrace the victory. We embrace the good report. We say we believe the report of the Lord. We embrace the report of the Lord. He say we shall be well. He say it shall be well. We shall conquer in the name of Jesus. And Father also hold the whole nation. We pray that this exam season will go on well. Peace we declare. Those children and people who are challenged, we remember them. Where there are chaos in this nation and candidates are affected, we pray, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. We thank you. We give you glory. Thank you for hearing us. For we ask it in Jesus' name. you in the troubles that surround you. May the Lord cause your soul to rest. May your, the Lord give rest to your family. May the Lord give you rest in the place where you labor. May the Lord give you rest in your spirit. May the Lord who makes war to cease intervene in your very life and make war to cease. May the Lord who calms the storms and the ocean May he calm it for you. And may you sail through that those who thought you'll be swallowed by the storms will see you across and say, the Lord is God has done it. May the Lord now bless you and keep you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord look to you with favor and give you shalom, shalom. That your mind and your heart be guarded by this peace. And you know shalom all the way. As you ponder his word. As you think and imagine. And as you speak it. May everything you do prosper. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the love of God. And the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. 